lagi Cukulah kau dapatkan diri lebih Burung kaya kapak pergi dulu Mba Hello everybody, welcome to another episode solo No guest, Bobby Lee and George and Gilbert In the house with my beautiful girlfriend uh, It's really good to be here Tiger Belly <laughs> Yeah? Yeah Me walking down the street Everybody, nosotros papai to you Slep King in the house Welcome to another fine, wholesome episode of the tiger belly guys i'm telling you right now i don't even remember a life without pandemic what's i don't last... remember a life without pandemic this is the new normal for me what's your last memory my last memory was um being in denver but um i'll tell you how i don't because I, I okay okay so i'm on I, I did a show yesterday it's called nailed it it's a cooking show mm-hmm. right damn what I'm, you know, I was joking. I'll catch you. I'll catch you. So I'm, I'm, i This is the first time I've been around people like new, pe- like anybody really. And when I meet, pe- I don't even know how to talk. <laughs> like they, they had contest. I'm a judge. They had contestants on this, this, this lady. You know, she is a uh, owns a manufacturing company in, you know, what I mean, outside of Chicago. Meet Kimberly or whatever, right? And then I'm like, how did you do you to you? Excuse me? That's what I can't... That, exactly. Cut. What the fuck are you saying? I've just never been around people before, yeah. I don't think. You know? And it's like, I get excited just with the grips. Yeah. Hey, you! What's your name? You know, I just get really excited around being around people. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. I feel like I've deteriorated socially, too. Even more than before. Yeah. How do you know? Um, I'm just not able to... Um, I don't know what to say or do or how to act. I don't, I just, I, I've deteriorated. Like, unless, I've, I already sucked with small talk mm. um, with um, new people. Now it's, I'm, I'm a mute. I, I just sweat in place. I just stand there and I just sweat. Like a sick person. Yeah. I've also been kind of numb to just the world in general in terms of like, it's, I'm not, we don't talk about politics here at Tiger Pill as we, you, we as we as we do, <laughs> or, you know? we, we, or we do, we do, we we do or we don't, we, we don't, we, we, we don't you know, way. because um, you know, I, you know, I, I have my own beliefs, but um, but even all the things that are going on politically in the regardless of where you stand, I've just been kind of fucking numb to it all, you know. In fact, things that I would find outrageous before, you know, like five years ago, if something, if the things that are going on right now right politically was happening five or six years ago it would have blown my mind like it would have like been what Mm -hmm. but now it's just like oh that happened that person said that you know normal that doesn't doesn't sound that crazy to me so i've been kind of right is is that true or no normalized it's not good but it's it's not good no i'm not saying it's a good thing i'm just saying that that's where i'm at yeah you know here's another thing i want to say just real quick before we get into it right hello to you it's really nice to see everybody in the room, right? I really enjoy you, George. You know? What a nice guy. Gilbert, back, right back at you. Touche. I'll take it. And I love you, baby. Thank you. I really do love you. Um, I want to say that podcasting has fucked me up in terms of my humor. Hmm. But now that I'm doing like TV-friendly things, I don't even know what regular humor is. You know, like Nicole Byer, I'm nailed. She's on Nailed It. Cool. She's so talented. This young, very funny, this lady. You know, and um, I've always enjoyed her. And uh, you know, she's doing like smart. You know, that's smart. impressions and da 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 da. You know, they just do showbiz. Da 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 da. They do showbiz yeah. stuff, right? And I'm there, like I was molested. They're like, cut, cut. You can't. This Why? Is, there's kids. It's a cooking show. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I sucked dick in high school. Like, that's not gonna Cut. work here. Cut. That's not gonna. Hey, I masturbate to weird porn. You can't say por- you know whatever it might be. <laughs> you can't say porn. Yeah, but the kind of porn is the old people. They don't. Cut. Cut. Yeah, it's like I f- don't know what it is. I don't know how to do. What the fuck is that? Oh, they're oh, taking shit. our their um. That scared me. I'm not gonna it's, lie. The trash can. Oh, I thought it was that like scared you, Will. Yeah, that's what we guys were getting mugged. That a dragging? A mugged, a mugging. The most dangerous man in this entire neighborhood is Bobby Lee. 
I that's definitely that. the truth. I can see that. Yeah. Nice. I'm de- very dangerous. Not physically, but just in my mind. I can implant things in your mind. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you so much. Like, he will burn our own house down. Clava, what happened recently? <laughs> oh, well, that wasn't really his oh. fault. It, th- oh, my God, you guys. Have you ever thought about, like, you know, when you worry about your own death, what are things that pop in your head? Like, is it, do you die from a plane crash or do you die from a sickness? Like, what are things that cross your mind? Oh, Gilb. Sorry about that. I don't know why that's on. I want to be death by churro. <laughs> like choking on a churro? Is that but what no, you think about? No, be real. No, but like working at a churro factory and then like something, a mishap happening. And like ninety thousand churros just landing on top of me, and I just drowned in it. Okay, so I but I but drowning by churro, drowning by churro. Oh, it's drowned by drowning, churro. But yeah, when they see my body, though, I'll have a smile on my face. Stampede by churro. I love churro. Okay, so what the, I'm what, what, what you're saying is you have final destination thoughts. I don't. Oh. I always I always like my worries are always like either medical or mm. my my biggest one is car accident. Or even though like I'm a swimmer, you always never not think about drowning and stuff, right? What never occurred to me was that I could potentially have a crushing injury or a crushing death by refrigerator. You no, and, that's a you real, that's you a real even, fear. That's, oh, that, that I didn't she, ever occur to me, and it almost happened to me uh, two nights ago. She, bro, I witnessed it. <laughs> okay, number one, I realized that I'm a coward. That I don't have really good reflexes, <laughs> right? And that whatever happens to Kalila, if she dies in front of my eyes, reflex based, it, it'll it'll be reflex based, Re- reflex based. It'll death. be it'll be like <laughs> she she died in front of me, and they're like, "Did you stop did, the bullet? I did nothing." Okay, so you so know I'm how? Sitting, yeah, go ahead. Tell. So you know how um Bobby flooded the home, right? AKA, I didn't flood the Bobby, aka home. the cat, flooded the home, right? And so for the last two weeks, we've had construction <sighs> workers um, basically rip out our yeah. floors and try to dry the floor underneath it. Mm-hmm. Um, so they've had to, um, our fridge is normally bolted onto the wall. And so to get to the floor underneath the fridge, they've had to unbolt the fridge and move it to the living space. So there's just a freestanding fridge right in the middle of our living room, right? And um, I... Um, Jules and I um, picked up the groceries and brought it upstairs to put it away in the fridge. And as I was putting stuff away in the fridge, I guess the fridge was on a slight tilt forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all the doors (laughs) opened up. Where was Bobby? He was actually sitting in the living room, like watching this whole thing happen. No, I was no (laughs) spectating it. Tell me your version. Okay, first of all, my version is this. Okay. I have no idea what the fuck you guys are doing. We're putting groceries away. I understand that, right? But I hear, I hear people lifting things and you know, like yeah. opening packages, whatever, right? Yeah. I my attention is I'm watching Picard, the the CBS show. Yeah, no, the, the I'm, episode... I'm watching. No, I'm watching Star Trek: The Next Generation. Pic- uh, Picard. It's the episode where with Picard Nella. falls oh. in love with Nella. Nella. Okay. Yeah. And so I love love stories. So you're in it. You're as you know. I love love stories. Yeah. As you know, I love Picard. You hate when Picard falls in love. I don't. I, I turn away from the kissing scenes. <laughs> just, like, Whenever he tries to kiss her, I just go, "What the fuck!" Right, and I turn away. Why is that? Because he's the captain. And he you don't. You don't kiss. When you're the captain, you just everyone deserves love. I know. When you uh, think about it, though, you know because they don't show this in the TV show. But if that was real, yeah, he must masturbate. Oh, for sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but imagine Picard. You know what I mean? Where do you some think Earl Grey tea okay. before bed? And then he plays his little flute, secures his keypad so no one can open the door. Right, yeah, yeah. And he, and then he probably pulls his pants down and he goes, engage. And just, <laughs> <laughs> make it so. <laughs> Thrusters. Oh, power. Right. Where do you think he splooges? Oh, he, shit. Probably right. It probably splooges right onto that little on, symbol thing. On the badge? <laughs> yeah, on the badge. <laughs> Right, or maybe it splooges right because you know, they have these little, um, these little things on their neck that shows them the ranking. Oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, so do they I was, wear socks on the Enterprise? I don't fucking know. I've never thought. Of that. You're a super fan. I never. Do they wear? I don't know. I don't. Would know. they need socks? I make assumptions that they make wear I've, socks. I've never looked at like wharf <laughs> shoes or anything like that. Yeah, so yeah. I'm saying so. Picard is not a splooging socks kind of guy. No, no. There's no way. I think good. that. Um, Who does their laundry? Bobby, oh, answer all these that's questions. That's interesting. I never thought of that. 
Is it a Korean? There's so many things I've never thought of. I've never thought of if they wear socks. Mm -hmm. True. If they, how do they do their laundry? Yeah, masturbation. Yeah, but um, I, mean, I assume that those things happen. They must. I've seen them drink and eat food and whatnot. But because anyway, like, okay, sorry. So I'm watching um, Picard <laughs> fall in love on the show. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I hear, e and I look to my left, and the fucking refrigerator is landing on Kalila's head. This gigantic metal refrigerator, and she shoulder chucks it. All right? of the food Wait. and the jars, like the glass things, broke on top of my body. At this point, are you Wonder Womaning like shoulder? So what I did, and I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna have give a shout out. I know people hate group workouts, but I'm gonna give a shout out to Barry's boot camp. Shout out to Barry. <laughs> because ask Bobby, it turns out I have superhuman strength. And I didn't say a word when it was happening. I basically just lifted the fridge. Yeah. And Juliana was frozen, yeah. trying to help me, but she couldn't because of the angle. And this fridge was all halfway, like already. How much was the already at this point? Was it? It was over. Basically, it's all like the this. weight of the fucking refrigerator is on her shoulder. By the it, way, it was like this. Already yeah. that far? Yeah. yeah. The fridge just fell like straight over. Oh, right. so Imagine a the, tree falling over. That's yeah. what all the like. glass and everything yeah. was. Crash, crash on my head and everything and i basically just had to deadlift it and push it back this way okay so that is scary so okay that happens you're first of all you're watching a love story so you're thank you <laughs> i'm on. watching pop papa love is love story you see that fall on and I, I i see it fall i, I go what do i say what's the first thing yeah. baby, baby, baby. <laughs> All I hear is because I have I have to basically do a deep squat, right, to pull the fridge off of me. Yeah, yeah. All I could hear for 30 seconds was, babe, 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 babe. You're like, I know. Not it's 30 awesome. seconds. And then, I, 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 I'll argue that timeline. And he, I was like, can somebody fucking help me? Not, not 30 seconds. I'll argue that. You know, I got to give it up to Jules, though. She tried so hard She's with nothing. her little legs. She's a twig. <laughs> She's a twig. I think she made it worse. <laughs> she made it fall more? Yeah, yeah. Because she had her little fucking arm on the thing, and she is in complete fucking shock. Oh, I got So I, I get up, and I start pushing, you know what I mean, the, the door handle. Meanwhile, there's kimchi. There's mustard. All over the floor. Old salsa, old burrito. I, everything, everything that was in the fr Everything was just scattered all over the thing. The dogs are freaking out. It was a fucking mayhem. It was our own 9-11. <laughs> Your own falling tower. Yeah, it was our own 9-11. And so we finally get it into place. And um, we all had just that moment of like, holy shit, Kalila almost died by refrigerator. By refrigerator. And then and then the cops. The cops? What? No, if they did. It's oh. Like, what happened? Well, the, the fridge fell on her head. <laughs> really? What happened? Sir? But I swear to God, I was watching it. That, you know, you, you like Next Generation? <laughs> I would say that. Like love stories? Do you like, like love, love stories? stories? You like love stories? <laughs> you know what he said afterwards because he didn't want to clean well, what did up the you, mess? What did you say? Were you pissed at this point or were you kind of just like in disbelief? No, eventually after about, I it felt like 30 seconds. He says 15 seconds. Eventually he helps me do the final push on the fridge. Mm, thank you. You got there. So like the last 5% of my leg strength he he helped with. Mm. But he got there. I got I got there. And then, but... He didn't want to help clean up the mess. So his thing was, I will not. He told me and Jules, he's like, I'm going to give you two weeks break of no booger attacks. Oh, wow. If you clean all of it up. And Jules and I took the deal. Yeah, we we, the, you got to take that. We deal. hate when he like puts um, his, his you gotta boogers take, on You got to take that deal. I thought it was like once in a while. This is no, an no, you got to take the deal. You gotta Wait, the booger attack? Yeah, I was like, hey, once a week, maybe. Can I just... Can I just? Yeah, he, he has a whole wall of boogers and he peels... It's not a wall of boogers. It's a napkin full of it's boogers. It's like, you know how people have sticker collections <laughs> and that you. waxy paper? Yeah, I love anything that sticks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he yeah. has a whole booklet of boogers and like, like a sticker collection. And then he just chooses which booger to peel out of that I'm a disgusting child. thing and then he puts it on us so um but can i just defend myself real quick is let's say george george let's say you and i were hiking never will never will happen but let's suppose oh, I'm going on the and out, out of the sky a fucking piano <laughs> is falling <laughs> a full-blown grand piano is falling <laughs> towards your head right my first initial reaction is going to be able to process, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
is that a piano? Right. I mean, you because you would you had you would have to check your mind and your eyes to see if they're connected. Yeah. And then you have to fucking so when the refrigerator is falling on her, that's what I'm going through. Baby, 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 like what the fuck is this going on? I'm processing what's going on because it's never happened before. I didn't think it would it could ever happen. Right. So that's what that 10 seconds is. You know, to, I will I will agree with you in the sense that while it was happening and everything was falling on my body, I thought, is this a refrigerator attacking? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. I, have to I, go I didn't make process. sense to me, too. Like my, my instinct was just to push back. Right. Mm -hmm. And to lift the, the freezer handle like away. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I you're right. I don't think I maybe would have moved as fast either to help you if thank, it happened to you thank you thank you so it was it's, it was a bizarre wow yeah incident i'm just um, so you know i have these like um, um flashbacks oh no i have this fear that it, what if it was jules and she's like so much smaller than me and she's a strong girl but she is you know what i mean she's physically different though she oh, weighs on 90 pounds uh, she would have fucking died she weighs 90 pounds. And imagine that phone call to the Philippines, like to her mom, like, hey. Yeah, yeah. You know how we have a me gigantic metal refrigerator? <laughs> She's like, yeah. What is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. M m incidentally, I just want to say that, um, I'll forget it. It doesn't, even, doesn't mean anything. It means it, everything. It means everything. Tell me. Yeah, imagine, uh, we live in a world now where, you know, you can you can videotape at any moment. You know you can you know the world is connected in that way. You can't really, you know, imagine trying to murder somebody. It's a, it'd be very nope. difficult, right? But my point is is that um, like we get videos of like Karens, right? Every at, day. like a Jamba Juice or whatever every day now, right? But now imagine the billions of Karen moments. That were untaped, Do under uh, undocumented, right? Yeah, and they were just hearsay. Hey, did you hear what? See what Linda said. Linda was acting all crazy, saying that she won't wear a. You know, imagine there was a time <laughs> where like Karens went free crazy. Wow. But but did did it did it take the exposure of Karens and seeing it on social media for you to believe that there were that many that existed? Because I always knew they were around. You see it every I'm walk. hidden from Karens. I, I've never even really run into a Karen before. Oh, gosh. Really? Come on. You at airport. There's Th so that, many. No, no. I, everyday I, life. No, because I would have to, because I'm, so, I would have to be in the midst of a Karen's outbreak. I would be, I would have to be the, the catalyst to get a Karen to go. And because I'm so mischievous and quiet and also underground, right, that I, when I'm around in public places, I, I try to avoid, like, fucked up situations. I think I can read when a situation is about to happen or when I see a person, you know, just, I just, not just white people, but generally white, some white people where I just kind of go, <laughs> I th th this is going to be an incident. Like, I told you about, <laughs> I, I told you about like, so you, know, like you racial profile the white people. <laughs> well, no, like, you know, I told you about. This that is going to be an incident. incident. <laughs> Yeah, like you know, like when I was at a, I was at a hotel once, right? And a white groundskeeper. Yeah. You know, I you know how I dress. I I dress. Um, sometimes I dress. Um, what do you call dystopian? What's a groundskeeper? Yeah. It was it, it was he was a white man who was in charge of the groundskeeper. He was a groundskeeper. Like a like a. The only, gro the only groundskeeper I know is from Harry Potter. And he had no, he, he drew, drove around in a <laughs> golf cart. He wore green, a green like from top to bottom, one thing. So he, it was obviously, had something to do with telling, basically telling Mexicans, go trim that. Okay, God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I know, but, but you that, I mean, that, you, I get you it. drove me into that. I get it now. You drove me into that. He's basically, the boss, man. Basically, the manager of a landscaping I at, thought at, at, when you said groundskeeper, I thought it was like somebody that oversaw like a mansion. No, when you kind go of. to a fancy hotel, right, where there's a lot of like lawns and like shrubbery and whatever, they have a probably <laughs> they have a guy who's the groundskeeper. Okay, I love that word. Now. All right, so I'm sitting on a bench yeah. in a hotel in Arizona, and I look dystopian, meaning my like one jean leg was there the other one was not <laughs> okay there's holes in my shirt yeah right and i think i just woken up i was having a cigarette and like i had like my face was drooping 
Bell's. Bell's palsy. Bell. Yeah, I had Bell's palsy, right? Yeah. Because when I stress, you were stressed. when I wake. No, when I wake up, not everything is awake at the same time. <laughs> I, I understand that. Okay, it takes different time. So I'm smoking. You know, my face is drooping. I look dystopian, and I look like I didn't belong at the hotel. Mm-hmm. The groundskeeper comes up to me. All right, I'm not going to explain what that is anymore. <laughs> okay. Would you like and, the definition just to? No, get no, 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 there? no. Okay. Please don't. All right. Okay. And he goes, "Where's your hotel key?" Mm-hmm. Like, and there was other people around. Mm. Were there other, you know, people drinking coffee and around, you know, dignified people, mm-hmm. people that look like they belong there? He, I go, excuse me, and he goes, Wait, "Are you staying at the hotel? Because you can't stay here. You can't be sitting here. You know, if you're not staying at the hotel, I mean, mind you, now this is a Chad moment, right?" Mm-hmm. But I didn't have my fucking phone on me, right? No I couldn't tape it. So I, I, so I just gave him my key. Like, I'm staying room, this room, and I just walked away, yeah. right? But that could have been a Chad Karen moment. You know what I mean? I could see I could that. Have Not taped by him. you, though. Yeah, but he was acting chatty. Yeah, that was he was chatty. Yeah, so I could have taped him, but I avoid this, avoided the situation. Mm. Did that make it, sense or no? It, no? it makes sense. No, no. Try to explain it because to me now it doesn't make sense. Y- yeah. I, I think that someone is profiling you based on the way you appear. Your I was just making appearance. an example how I try to kind of like squash situations and walk away from it and not, you know, not um, put more gasoline on the fire. What I wanted to do is I will not give you my hotel key. What do you mean? I go, there's other fucking people around. You're not fucking asking them for their hotel key. So fuck you. You should ask them for his hotel key. Where's your hotel key? <laughs> yeah. I'm the groundskeeper. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep it in. I mean, the we pipe. had the movie theater, um, Chad and Karen. Hey, guys, we're going to take a quick break to uh, share one of our favorite sponsors with you. Hims, 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 for hims.com. Yeah. You guys, I love for hims.com. It's my favorite thing because it they address all men's needs. Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, sometimes... Being a man can be a disaster, and there's problems, problemos that occur. 66% of men start losing their hair by, by the age of 35. Did you know that? Once you've noticed thinning, it can be sometimes too late. These aren't snake oil pills or uh-huh. gas station counter supplements. These are prescription solutions backed by science. No more awkward in-person doctor visits or long pharmacy lines. Tell us more about it, Gil. Today, Hims is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. And right now, Tiger Belly listeners can get their first visit absolutely free. Go to 4 slash belly. That's 4 slash belly. Woo! Full refund of price paid available first 90 days supply. Refund requests must be made between 90 and 180 days after product shipment delivered. Prescription products require an online consultation with a medical professional who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. One more time, guys. That's 4 slash belly. Better help. Better help. That's H-E-L-P help. Guys, better help has changed my life here in quarantine. You know, mm-hmm. you know, it's the best time to use this, this therapy online service. Yeah. Because, you know, it can be really depressing with your thoughts. And I was able to deal with my trauma, deal with my relationship with Kalila, deal with all kinds of issues that occur when it comes to um, just living a a modern life, my friends. Mm -hmm. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, Gilbert. I know, you're right. Did you know that? It's not even self-help. Fuck not. Oh. Yeah. It's professional counseling then securely online. The service is also available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. This is one of the features I really like. There's a journal feature where you can just write all your thoughts, Mm. things that are bothering you, and that your um, therapist can then have a look at. Mm. And we'll already have that information even before and as you enter your session with them. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Belly. That's Better H-E-L-P and join over the million people taking billion. charge. Billion, wow. Well, yeah, I think you said a billion. Million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Special offer to Tiger Belly listeners. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. Chad and Karen. 
who oh, that's us right. Up. We, who were so angry at us because we screamed during a scary part in a movie and they wanted to fight us, remember? Yeah. And they were making such, and they were like, if you, if, if you know that you, you make sounds during a horror film, you should just watch this at home. I, but can I, said. but I want to, I'm going to admit something to you uh -oh. that I'm going to regret saying, but I have to, I don't like to edit myself. Okay. And it's going to be embarrassing to be saying this. Okay. If it didn't happen two floors down from the comedy club that I was I was performing at, yeah, I don't think that I would have confronted them. Interesting. M meaning, so we watched a movie. My ego, yeah, was like, how do you how this is so embarrassing? How dare you? I'm on the market. Talk to me on my in my home turf. It's not only that. Like I sold out every show. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like how you felt with the restaurant when the restaurant wouldn't seat you at. Right. Like yeah, exactly. Same feeling. Yeah. When I. You know what I mean? I just don't like being treated in a in oh, fuck. I don't like being treated. I don't like being treated in a um uh disrespectful way, you know what I mean? In an area where I'm killing it at. Hey, it's an extra blow to your ego. Yeah. It just it's so embarrassing to say that. Whatever. For but I was there and I felt wronged because these people were so you know, angry and wanted a confrontation out of us screaming at the scariest part of the movie. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that's, I didn't even think about you playing that club at all. I just wanted to, you know, have it out with them because those little, they were fucking being little baby Karens. Yeah. But oh, the technology is basically what I'm saying. We live in a different world. No one got that on camera, huh? What? You no should have got that on camera. I'm surprised no one in the theater started filming that when you got well, I, I, that. That would have been great. You, you know what? I, we, we, we will film the next one. No. Yeah, I'm going to No, because we're never going to have that again. We're just going to walk away like spineless creatures that we've always been. I don't no, think it's spineless. I think the way you've approached even the groundskeeper is like, why? Like, you might as well just go away. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah, because I always, I told you, uh, we've talked about the, the restaurant where the guy said, pull my pants up. Yeah. It's, 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 it's again, it's those situations where. Um, I don't fight for my right to be there, you know, and I think in many ways I was trained. I've, I, I've always been so self-aware that I was a small Asian guy and I've always been self-aware that I live, you know, I, I'm much older than everyone here. So I lived in a w world where it was much more outwardly racist, I guess. And like, you know, p people saying shit to me that was like, you know what I mean? In today's standard would have got them fucking fucked right but in in my world like i've had directors i lived in hollywood when i was in i've done sh shoots where a director has said eight, like really racist shit to me like yeah i had a fucking director call me a flat face gook oh that's where you got it from. and then i yeah and, yeah cool. yeah and i yeah that's where i got it from got it and like and then people just still going about their business as if he just yelled it right yeah and like okay. and I, i'm sitting there going Ah, here I am, flat fish cook. That's me. That's me. And like not been able to say anything or and no one getting in trouble for it. So I live, I'm very like mindful and also very sensitive to the fact that I guess I should, I should I, we live in a different world. I should change the way I, you know, live in the world and, and fight for my right to be, for being here. If yeah. Guys, really quick. If you guys are at a restaurant and let's say uh, there's kids running around being very belligerent, parents aren't doing anything. At that point, do you say something to the parents, to the kids, or do you just keep shut? What do you mean? So there's kids that are at a table next to you, keep bumping into you. You're eating at a restaurant. They're yeah. knocking things over. They're screaming. They're yelling. Parents are talking to their friends. Do you just sit there? Yes. See why in that situation? Because because that's he, that's what I hate. My brother and I were at. Um, you're gonna hate this place, but we were at El Cholo. Benihana. El oh. Cholo. Oh, the Mexican restaurant. Yeah, yeah. On Sixth. Hey, Street. I respect the history of El Cholo. I just am not sold on the food. Is that an okay compromise for you? Okay. I love, I love the food. I think it's very historic. I think that I love the food. I love the food. It's just not my jam. It's like there's so many awesome Mexican places. I understand here. that, baby. And mom and pop shops. But they're fucking. Ch fucking ch chimichangas. chimichangas. The chicken chimichangas are the best on planet Earth. <laughs> they are. They're very good. The shredded tinga chicken. I love it. My brother and I were eating chinga chicken. Chicken. <laughs> chinga chicken. <laughs> uh, 
Tinga tinga. That's our. My brother and I were chinga chinga. Chinga tinga. Chinga tinga. Chinga ticken. Chinga tinga. Chinga We're opening a food truck, guys. Yeah, yeah. Out and enjoying ourselves. And when my brother and I, we we talk like you know sailors. Sure. Fuck that guy. You know, we just you know, and we had. And a, a lady come up to her at the table and go, excuse me, will you not, you know, use that profanity? <laughs> my, my grandchildren are here. And my brother and I go, sorry. And we just whispered the whole way. But no more. I'm no longer doing that so anymore. That's why I proposed that situation. Say the kids are next to you, bumping into you at the point where they're knocking down your glasses. See, like, switch it around. Why wouldn't you tell them, like... Hey kids, sit the fuck down. Like because because I, I I think my point of view is you know when you're at a table in a restaurant, regardless of what's happening, just mind your own fucking business. I agree with Bobby because in my head, the reason I would never say anything, it's like, you know what? It's hard enough to have kids. It's the same reason why I don't say anything and I grin and bear. When like a child is kicking the back of my seat in the in an airplane for seventeen hours, like one time on a flight to Melbourne, um, it was like a fifteen hour flight, right? There was not only a crying kid, like a toddler, just straight up kicking my back the whole way through, but the woman on the aisle seat was about three hundred fifty pounds, so I couldn't get up to pee. So I politely told her that I was just like, "Don't worry about it. I'm just gonna crawl over you." Each time it was the worst flight of my life. But I just don't say anything because I always just imagine it's probably harder for the parent back there. And it's probably harder for the woman next to me. Like, I'm young. I'm fine. Nothing's really happening. And I just really kind of like it's it doesn't it bothers me, but probably not as much as they're bother, bothered. The parents. Yeah. The parents, you know, so I'm just like, whatever, kids. Like, that's the one thing that I love about the Philippines that. I have a fear of raising kids here versus raising them in the Philippines because there's so much like shame and rules when it comes to parenting here. Like in the Philippines, like your kid could be screaming, just being a kid. And then there are no repercussions over here. It's like, you know, silence your child, like take control of your child. And it's like, it's a fucking one and a half year old man. Like, yeah, but what if in the Philippines, I've seen this where a mother is dragging you know what I mean? Their child by their hair in the across, uh, you know, a target, right? Yeah. It is at that point. At that point, do I? At that point, do I say, you know, excuse me, don't drag your child by your hair, or do we mind our own business there? That's a no. Weird, if yeah. a child is being harmed and abused, and like, no, I would absolutely intervene. I'd be like, what the fuck, lady? That's a kid. I would say something then. I'd be like, what, what the fuck are you doing? I'm going to call somebody if you don't stop doing that. Yeah, but I don't think I would do that. I would. That's fucked up. If you're not going to go help a child who's obviously being harmed in that way. and But but you know what? There have been situations legitimately where like it's not our place. Okay, I'm, uh, let me give you a scenario. Make it good. I, it's going to be very good. Let me throw it to you, Gilbert. Cool. You're at a restaurant by yourself. And you see... A friend of yours. Let's call him Tommy G. Tommy G. And Tommy G. Tommy G goes, hey, dude, you eating by yourself? You know what I mean? Hey, can I sit with you? Would you say yeah? Yeah, sure. Sit down. Okay, what if Tommy G had a friend? My friend Billy's here. Billy sits down, and Billy has nice guy, you know, pretty cool guy, right? <laughs> but, but, he, but he had a tumor, right, the size of another human head dripping from his head. Oh, is it oozing? Yeah. No, it's not oozing. It's just Keep a going. tumor that's Keep just going. like hanging from his head. Sure. And you're eating with him. Would you be like, and the tumor's like, you know, you're eating, at, you're at a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. And it's like his tumor's like kind of dunking. It's just dipping into the salsa. Oh, I just go. Would you ever, do? would you completely ignore the no, tumor? I literally, no. If he sat down, I go, who's your friend? Yeah. <laughs> you make a joke immediately. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. You look at the, oh, that's very good. I see the friend. I see Billy. Oh, hey, Billy. Nice Bobby to meet you. Bobby does that with my I, pimples. I would even put my hand out to the tumor and try to shake it. <laughs> like, for me, Be I, I don't want to deal with like, because yeah. they know I see it. It's yeah. like I told you, my friend with the three fingers on his hand. Yeah. I will purposely shake his hand. Yeah. Squeeze it. Yeah. Like, search. For, so he knows that I know I'm feeling it. No. I don't want to deal with the awkwardness later. See, what I would do is different. I would do the opposite. 
right? Oh my I would be, I would try, because I don't want him to hurt his feelings. So mental gymnastics. I know, but if his tumor was dipping into the salsa, okay, okay, say it's, I would take a chip and still eat the salsa and pretend it didn't happen. You would probably even go past go, mmm, <laughs> more flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I think I would completely ignore it. Why do you ignore those things? Like, like, because I don't want to hurt his feelings. I'm going to go, hey, nice tumor. You don't think it's condescending? To, uh, <laughs> I, what do you do? Nice tumor, friend. I mean, he would laugh. He would like, hey, yeah. nice tumor. <laughs> yeah. That's be funny. Yeah. Like, Kalala, do you ignore anything? Like, say someone has, not a pimple, but like, like a deformity, which we all can see. Do you yeah. avoid ever bringing it up or even asking about it? Or do you just go on? If it's very, like, upfront in your face like Bobby described. I, I choose my moments wisely with people. I also am really, like, sensitive to that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I choose my moments wisely. Like there would not, there would be nothing. I've never felt awkward around people with deformities just cause yeah, I choose my moments. It's like if, if they, if they start the conversation, if they want to open up, that's fine. If not, they're a regular human being. If it doesn't get in the way of our actual conversation, like what's it to me that he looks different than me? Or if it doesn't right. get in the way, it doesn't get in the way, then who cares? I don't give a shit. Now, if it's getting into my salsa, yeah. then I'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Whoa, 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 I would, I would probably try to take a napkin to his tumor and be like, you're getting it wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting yourself wet. Yeah, my point, here's my point of view. If I have a tumor on my head yeah. and I meet anybody for the first time, uh, I address the tumor. I don't think you have to address a tumor. We all see it. No, but to make it not. Why, I have a tumor. No, not attack. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. no. I, I wouldn't be like that. I'd just be like, I'd, if, if I'm, I have a tumor on my face. I have a friend named Tommy G. Tommy G is like, hey, I'm going to sit next to my friend Gilbert, right? When I sit at the table, before you, I even shake Gilbert's hands, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, sorry about the tumor. It might, yeah, it's so big. It might, you know what I mean? Fall in the salsa. Fall in the salsa. So that it opens up the conversation for you to go to say things about it. Yeah, but why does it have? Why does he have to wear it, bear the emotional burden of your discomfort around him? Because I just want to. Because like uh, I don't have to. Like if something is wrong with me, and mm. let's say like I, I'm missing like an arm or whatever, why do I have to explain myself just so you're not comf not you're un not uncomfortable? Where it's like it's grow up. Is shit. We're all different bodied. Like it, it, it's fine. Shit happens. We're there are a lot of different fucking I think possibilities for how we can look. It's fine. An arm is different than a tumor, by the way. No, but what I'm saying, right, is a, a like, tumor is something that you would have to address. I think. Well, no, that's I. If, if it happened to me, I don't feel like I have to keep explaining to everybody around like what it is. Can you just get over the fact that yeah, something's possibly growing on my face and that it's different from yours, and then just like move on. Yeah, I will say anyone I've encountered is usually being in, in comedy, so they are the ones that always bring it up. Uh, yeah, because I've, uh, I've but I feel like to, that's a way to like deflect too. Like I feel like they do that because of course you again. know they're worried that people are uncomfortable around them. But if I had that shit, I'd be like, sit in your discomfort. I'm not even going to explain to you what this shit is. So at no point, so at no point, she does have a point when it falls no, to salsa. She goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's true. Yeah, I'd be like, let me wipe your tumor for you. Now it's wet. Then do you order another salsa? I'd call the waiter, or do you leave that? No. It's oh, that, that's, 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 that's interesting. interesting. Let me. I'll, that's interesting. I'll, I'll answer your question. Yeah. Look, if it's not an unhygienic <laughs> thing, yeah. No, I'd eat it because guess what? They're fucking people barehanded making your food anyways. It's the same as fucking the meat on his tumor and the meat on their hands. It's fine. How rude it would it be if you go, waiter? Can I get a different salsa? <laughs> well, first of all, I can hear you whispering, dude. Yeah. My tumor can hear you whispering. Dude. <laughs> yeah. What kind of tumor are we talking about? Is it like an elephant trunk? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like elephantitis? Yeah, I've seen that on like, you know, in that the show that I love, Body Bazaar, Body right? Bizarre. Where so, I saw a lady with hands, right, that were like the size of, um, you know what I mean, a fucking ottoman. Mm -hmm. Like they were gigantic hands, right? So it's like, if I have those kind of hands and I meet somebody... You mean, do I shake it or do I go, hey, man, you can just shake the finger. <laughs> All right. Well, that's so specific. No, because it's so big. Like I would have to because if you put your hand, it'll be weird. So I just be like, hey, dude, I know I have big hands, but just I'm shaking your hand. But just shake the fucking 
the fingernail part. I think you should offer the hand anyways and then wait for their move. If they're not comfortable shaking yeah. your hand, they're going to be like, dude, my hands are too big, so they're too heavy. I can't shake it. Because that's what I do. Like when people <laughs> yeah, offer... He looks like you're the idiot. Dude, my hand... You know how big my hand is? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Fuck you, true. man. Then, yeah. then, then it's on you. Then, then, <laughs> oh. then it's fine because like sometimes people do that. Like they, they extend their hands and I'm yeah. like, I'm sorry, I can't shake your hand because I have oh, like sweaty, yeah. wet, oh. you know, I have wet fish for hands. Imagine putting up your big hand and then them not shaking it and then it just starts getting heavy and you just hold it there. Yeah. You, you... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fucking shake it. Shake it. Yeah. <laughs> What are these scenarios that were coming? I I just love these scenarios. Oh, because man. these are things that I think about, social things I think about at night. It could happen. The thing is, it could happen. Yeah. Like when I see Body Bazaar, I think about like what it would be like to either be them mm -hmm. or what it would be like, you know, to be out in the, in the world socially. Yeah. You know, and what are the like, what are the social, you know, norms and things that you do? Yeah, yeah. I, I always think that like their experiences are probably so different than yours and probably present a lot of challenges. Yep. So like yeah. why be a dick and just like stop making their life more difficult and just treat them like you would anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, I would probably, you know, if I had something like that, I would just play it up. That's our personality, though. Yeah, like, you know, I, I saw one time I saw on Body Bazaar, you know, someone that has a skin very skin condition where they don't have a layer of skin so it's like red mm -hmm. you know and they can't be out in the sun that was a really sad one yeah if i had that oh. i would probably wear constantly like a Kr freddy krueger sweater <laughs> so you'd play it up and play it up yeah and have the hand you know the, the knife hand yeah you know, and just play it up and get in wow. you know a cheap halloween costume yeah <laughs> fuck you save man. money <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awful You're it's it is awful. awful it's terrible yeah you know, we should, you know, in, and I think when I watch a show like, and what people ask me, why do you watch shows like that? And um, I think gratitude. Mm. Oh, by, by, by the way, I think I need glasses. You, you feel like you can't see? <laughs> he's, he's been. I, I've been blind. He's been blind, guys, for a while. He's what just been in denial. What is your diagnosis from what you've seen the past? I think that year. he just needs glasses. He can't see. I, yeah. Well, he hasn't, since I've known him, he hasn't been able to read from a certain distance where I'm like, how can you not read that? Um, he can't read like uh, signs posted or like street signs or anything like that. I swear to God, this happened yesterday. This is how it happened. I was on Nailed It. Yeah. And you're, you're going to introduce the prize because they, you know, the winner who gets a prize. Yeah, yeah. And I go, I couldn't even see the monitor. I go, where do I read it? It's just on the monitor. Where is it? It's there, right in front of you. <laughs> You're holding it. And I go, okay. And so I didn't want to say, like, I can't see it. And I, so I was reading it. A couple of words, like, hey, the winner of this, you know, competition, you get, uh, you know, a stainless steel, I said, cockware. <laughs> cockware. And then you could hear, because I have laugh. a little, everyone laughing, like the producer, it's cookware. And I go, oh, dude! I, I swear to God, I was, I thought, I thought I saw a C. I thought one of the uh, uh, O's was a C, cockware. right? And I said cockware, and they laughed. And I go, can you bring it up, like the font up? So they had to put the font really big for for me to read it. Oh man, yeah. So I think I need glasses because Nicole was it's able not to a read. Think, babe, it's not a think. I know, but uh, where do I go? Would you? I'll do... take you to America's Best. <laughs> no, but I need to go to a doctor first, like an eye doctor, right? Yeah. yeah. All, all of those places. No, no, Warby Parker. Go to like a real ophthalmologist, an optometrist. I Can mean. you set that up? Because I, 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 I'm, I'm at, a, at that age where I think I need it. Oh, you are so cute with glasses. No, I was gonna say, would you rock contacts or? No, glasses? I would wear glasses. Nice. I've always wanted to wear glasses. Oh wow! Like cool ones, you know. I think the the glasses, the the glasses that he has been wearing the last couple months has kind of thrown his vision off the edge a little bit. The yellow ones. Yeah. You think so? Yeah, I think so. I think it worsened it because <laughs> they just made you kind of squint more because they were yellow lenses that you couldn't really, yeah. You know. I, mean, uh, I can see everyone here fine. I hope yeah. so. Too. Yeah. I wonder if you can. I, I can see everything. When I'm playing Warzone, I can see everything fine, right? How it's many just... How many fingers am I holding up? Three. Okay. Two. That baby, I'm not blind. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm what am blind. I doing right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, it's long distance. You know what I mean? Things get a little blurry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's all. 
you know. I'm not really concerned about it. I just think that I'm just getting older and I need glasses. Yeah. yeah. You know? I used to have 20-20 vision. Really? Yeah. Shit. I guess it's going to get bad for me at some point then, too. It's bizarre. Old age. Hi. <sighs> Even when I wake up now, it's like there's a couple of things that are like weird about it. Like what? what Can you big, tell me? Yeah, what are the big age things you're feeling? Just this morning I woke up and I was just like, ow. You know, not a pain or a sharp anything. It's just er things are sore now that normally aren't sore. Mm. It used to be sore. I used to just jump out of bed and like, come on, life. Let's <laughs> do this. Right? <laughs> In my mind, I wouldn't yeah, say that out yeah. loud. Okay, you good, know? Good. But now it's just like, oh, oh, okay, I'm up. You know, there's like that initial like things that kind of are achy and 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 I feel I I don't I, I feel like a child. Mm. You know, I you know when people go, you know, you'll see like a documentary, you'll see a scientist, and you go, oh, look at that old scientist, and they're like, I'm 46, and you go, <laughs> what the fuck? That yeah. old scientist is 46. I'm 48. I don't feel or look like that old scientist. Yeah. You don't look you don't 48. Give that off at all. It really angers me. Yeah. Because I really see... was hoping that the 13 year age gap between us would make you look like my opa. Mm -hmm. No. But it it we look like a regular same age couple, and I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's 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 strange, and as you get older, you do think about the end a little bit more often. Because if you think more than half my life is over now. Oh, if you're basing it on 100 years. Oh, well, then now most of it's over then. <laughs> Fuck you. Now most you're of it's two over. Two-thirds of the way. Babe. I mean, yeah, yeah. you're at 75. I mean, you think, think about it. I have probably, at the most, 40 more years. At the least, 20 more years. Damn. Ugh. Why do you look at it like that? I mean, but think of it. Think of it that. I don't want to. Can we move on? No, I don't want to move on. I think this is good stuff that we should talk about. It does it, it because it's, it's like you said at the least twenty more years. I'm like, no, anyone can croak five minutes from now, 50s. and then we get into that conversation, and then I'm all into in my head, and then I'm gonna be anxious and looking at you, and worried about you. Do you have fears that I'm not gonna wake up one morning? I genuinely have. <laughs> that is when I if, comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I got a tumor, but salsa. Uh, uh, <laughs> what What is the one question I ask you the most that pisses you off? Um, are you okay? Are you, you okay? okay? Yeah, I hate, you okay? Uh, I hate that. Yeah, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. It's like every sound he makes at night in bed, even the one that I fucking hate so much. The I fart? Play it. I wish it was a fart. Oh, the scratching? No, it's that. Oh, the that water smell. Oh, when I sleep, yeah. Oh my god, he just like it. I don't know what it is, but that's what, that's what wakes me up. Yeah, I'll wake up and she'll. I'll just to get a drink of water. She goes, "Are you okay?" Okay, yeah. Uh, can I drink water? Yeah. Yeah, I need to get that out of my head. It's 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 my my worry. No amount of worry for me is gonna change any outcome. So it's like, what's the point of worrying? Um, but you know, like I uh, I get so angry with him because I just want him to be healthy, and he just really does not. He's so reckless with his body, and it just pisses me off. Yeah, I am. Well, does you thinking about your? What does that think about? But well, does it make you want to get healthy for real, for real, or not really? Thinking about your death every. Well, day. I did the I did the hypnotherapist Sunday. And um, it was impossible to start yesterday because I was shooting. Mm. You know, when I'm on a um, when I'm working, it's on a set, especially. It's like I just because of the stress of it. I, I it's just it's it goes hand in hand. I think the most difficult difficult thing about quitting smoking it's so tied into performing and stuff. Your process. Yeah. You know, like when you're at like a night because you know you perform at nightclubs and you're around. I don't drink, so people are boozing and you know having fun and all that stuff. It's just a part of the um, – also, you get anxious to do two shows a night in between shows. There's some anxiety, mm -hmm. not nervousness, but it's just like, okay, you know, the, it's a packed room, and I got to do it. You know, I have to – you know, and it, it's, it's just tied into it. So I, we, we, I also want to talk about, you know, um, I felt – Kalila and I have been watching Alone. Mm. Do you see the Light List season? Mm-mm. So, if you guys don't know, you, you, you have to watch the show alone. It's such a good show. And, you know, it's t 10 survivalists. They go out in the Arctic and they survive. And in this season, I don't want to get any spoilers, but I guess there is a spoiler here. 
is the last two contestants is a man and a woman. Can I say that? Yeah. Yeah. And the woman, there's 11, okay, so you, you, you have to last 100 days, and if you last 100 days in the Arctic, you get a million dollars. Okay? Wow, that's actually... This, gr- this girl is 11 days in. No, she's 89 days 89 in. 89 days in, she has 11 days left. That's a very, yeah. And she's like, in the camera, like, I think I'm going to make it. But her, her, her tone and her spirit it's- is like... Uh, unlike you've ever seen, it, it she is a fucking winner. Genuinely, the most inspiring. The way that she was just gonna, that she was able to face those elements, and she had it. She fucking cracked her head. There's, she had a fucking porcupine spine needle oh. embedded on her shoulder. There's so many things that didn't go her way at all, but there was never a moment in the entire ten episodes where she wasn't joyful showing gratitude being positive like i was in awe like my jaws were on the floor like how is she how is she able to do this so yeah and on the tip of her one of her toes there's some frostbite oh man what dude doesn't that get turn into basically dead yeah then gangrenous yeah 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 sure okay i'm not a medical man but i'm pretty sure that you're right okay but it's at the tip of the toe, okay? And she's like, oh, wow, weird. I got frostbite on the tip of my toe, right? The fucking show comes in, right? When she has 11 days left, we got to take you out. And she's like, you know, what? Yeah, that frostbite, you're going to lose your foot. D- don't you think that that should be her decision? No. I think that it was her decision, ultimately. No. It wasn't her post. It was because I read her post, her most recent post. What's a million dollars to a survivalist with no feet? A toe. No, it would have spread 11 a days. A feet is not a toe. No way. Let's have this debate. I, if you're going to tell me right now, <laughs> yeah. if you're going to tell me right now, yeah. Lila, we're going to amputate your big toe yeah. or even half of my big toe and pay you a million dollars, I'd be like, fuck no. Uh, for me, my toe is fucked anyway for the fungi. <laughs> take three. They're helping you. Take three. For, uh, take three. For a million dollars? Who gives a fuck? Yeah, but oh, okay, imagine this, Bobby. You sit at home. Your lifestyle allows you to take three steps a day. Like, that's what you want to do, right, is take three <laughs> steps a day. I'm somebody who likes to hike and swim and do all that. No, fuck that. I want all of my... You can walk without stuff. toes. I don't want to live a life without <laughs> feet if it means for a fucking million dollars. That's fine, but if it. they were, if they would have said this on the show, if they would have said, listen, you might lose your toe... Right, we would like to take you out, but it's your decision. They never prompted that for her. No, mm-hmm. they were like, "We're taking you out." She's like, "Really?" She said that. Yeah, really? but she agreed. No, they they were taking her out. No, babe, I think you read it differently than me. No, I yeah, I, I, there's only one way to read it, is they said we're taking you out, and she's like, "Really?" They're like, yeah, she's like, "But uh, I feel great. I, I mean, great spirits." They're like, yep, your toe. We need to, if, if only we could get her on the show, then we could probably. Ooh, we should. Um, well, I, I already asked her on her it. fucking uh, Instagram. And then other Tiger Belly fans were like, you should do it. But she didn't respond, so it's fine. Her name is Callie Russell. Yeah, Callie Russell. Fucking She's badass. She's such a badass, really inspirational. And um, she really. Um, and the other girl, too, Kylan. Oh, my God. Because it was two two women and a man at the end. Yeah. And the other girl, Kylan, oh my God, she's... Women are fucking tough, man. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's, it's like, because in that episode, in that season, you had real Marine, you know, like heavy duty, like a sniper. I'm a sniper for like special ops. Yeah. Like real tough guys. Three weeks in, they're done. Right? You're talking about 70, 80, 90 days in. Women are like, fuck it, I'm I'm in it. I'm I'm yeah, and all the these tough guys are dropping out. These women are fucking strong, man. I think like psychologically, they're always the most positive ones too. Yeah, in that show. They're always the ones who are a little bit more lighthearted. Mm-hmm. Except for Jordan, because Jordan was the greatest from beginning to end. You saw that? Jordan's the best. Oh, I love him so much. Jordan's incredible. But anyway, Callie, um, I know, you know, I you know, I I reach out to a lot of people on Instagram, you know. Most people that like who are uh, Zach Braff, no response. <laughs> no fucking response. Um I've asked um 
um, what's the English singer? Louis Capaldi. Louis Capaldi. Well, that's why he won't, because he knows that you can't even say his name right. So why would he come on the show? I just, I get brain dead. There we go. There's a, I, I'll run into people I've known for 30 years and forget their name. Yeah. That's who I am. And that's what I do. So, you know, <laughs> George is playing a war zone. You just uh, angered Clyla, George. Why would you do that? I don't think you did. I don't think we did. Why are people, why, why now, George? Do you feel like um, excluded from the fraternity? Okay, I figured That's as much. That's the main thing, yeah. Hey, guys, we're not taking another quick break to share a sponsor that we use all the time. Ship station! Ship station for your mind. Yes. Ship station for your needs. Uh-huh. You guys, ship station is a product that we use here at Tiger Belly. Um, we love ship station. It's a reliable. Yeah. It's a reliable service. <laughs> as folks adapt to a changing world. We're all going to be buying more stuff online, are we not? Yeah. Oh, than yeah. ever before. If you're an e-commerce seller, you are, are you ready to meet the demands of our new delivery culture? I don't know if you are. Mm -hmm. Be ready with <laughs> ShipStation.com. Why ShipStation? When you're selling online, getting a lot of orders out can be fast and can be tough. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel? How do you keep track of who gets what? Which shipping carrier should you use? Are you getting the best rates? That's why you need ShipStation.com, guys. It's the fastest, <laughs> easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. Just a few clicks, and you'll be managing your orders, printing out labels, and getting your product to happy customers. ShipStation makes it easy. No matter what you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, your own website, ShipStation brings all of your orders into one simple mm -hmm. interface, making them really easy to manage from any device, even your cell phone. Tell us more about it, Gil. And right now, Tiger Belly listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use the offer code BELLY. Make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of delivery culture. Get started at ShipStation.com today. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in BELLY. That's ShipStation.com, then offer code BELLY. ShipStation.com, make ship happen. Enjoy the rest of the show. Bobby and I watched a documentary um, called Fantastic Fungi. What is that about? It's basically how um, fungi and mushrooms are the lifeline of the universe or lifeline of earth i believe that and how you know we always see them as like you know like they don't really we see them as either mushrooms or food our, our idea of fungi is very limited sure. and it actually is sort of like the brain of the earth and how fungi is able to like interconnect like how trees communicate with each other how their uses in medicine how their uses Basically, it's everything about fungi beyond just eating mushrooms. Well, you know, fun fungi and mushrooms have, have always been, I've been very interested in it in terms of food. Same here. I, I enjoy, Don't you, I, anyone that says, I don't like mushrooms to eat, go, they can go fuck their fucking selves. <laughs> like, they can go fuck them, they'll fuck themselves right now. You don't like deliciousness? Do I mean, you're talking about truffle? Black truffle, come on, bonjour, bonjour. It's so fucking good. Shiitake mushroom. Shiitake, the shit. I used to. I didn't know. That's what. It, how you said it. How'd you say it before? Shit take. <laughs> Just stop. You I'm, used to say shit take dude, mushroom. At, I, I was at a. <laughs> dude, this is true. I was. I had a. I was at a Mad TV table read. Yeah. And I didn't ask, you because, the my line was, you know, do you have any shiitake mushrooms? So at the table read, I go, do you have any shit take mushrooms? And the place went bananas. Like, Great comedic choice, Bobby. No, they're like, you don't know how to read that? Because they know how dumb I was. Right? I go, what is it? It's shit talky. I go, oh, fuck. Shit. <laughs> that's my... Are that's, there any words that you... Oh, hell yeah. I've talked about it a yeah, lot on a like um, um, when we first started podcasting. I It was hard for me to transition. Like I didn't know that... Uh, an option at restaurants would they would ask you soup or salad. Mm -hmm. So when they would say soup or salad, I was I would always say no thanks. But that's because I thought they were asking me if I wanted a super salad. Ah, uh, so super, super, super salad, salad. super salad. So oh. for years, <laughs> you missed I, out. <laughs> you missed out. I associated. Because I ordered already like a big meal, and I'm like, I don't want a super, super salad, salad with that. And that's I always thought that that was an additional cost. No, I don't want a super salad. But for years, America was super salad land. And also, like... That makes sense. Yeah, there's so many words like that. Like, uh, f Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. I didn't know that it said in that song, you'll go down in history. I used to sing it as yogul down in history. Like, a yogul was a reindeer yodel. 
what? <laughs> like in my know. head, I was able to justify it as, oh, a yogul is probably a reindeer song that they sing. Interesting. When my, when my dad used to sing Frosty the Snowman, <laughs> yeah. he would go, Frosty, he a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Love that one. And, I, and I'd just be like, what? Yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I guess he's a good guy. Like my mom, she's, to this day, she doesn't know that it's couch potato. She still calls it a potato couch. Potato. Oh. And cool. she, when she yells, it was so hard to be serious when she would like yell at us. You're being a potato couch. <laughs> Well, we wouldn't correct her because our dad had this thing where he would um, get really upset when we would uh, correct our mom's oh, English. Like disrespectful. Uh -huh. Yeah, because yeah. he was like, he's like, he. my dad was one of those guys that was like, wait, I'm in the Philippines. I'm the foreigner. Why am I going to correct the way you're communicating with me? He's like, if I understand you perfectly and I get the gist of what you're saying, I'm not going to fucking police your grammar. That's my dad's take on things. So when he, when we would try to correct our mom on potato couch, he's like, well, you, you know what she means, right? Mm. She's like, get the fuck off the couch. Uh, it's like, why are you snickering? Is it snickering or sniggering? Whoa. I'll, I'll take the first Cut. one. I'll take the first <laughs> one. Cut. Whoa. No, that's uh, not. Uh, Bobby, uh, cookware? Not cookware. <laughs> it's do not, not delete that. Do not delete that. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait. What is the word? Can you please look it up for me? Yeah, I've go, never it's done not, it. I'll tell you this right now. It's not the second It's not one. sniggering. <laughs> I think it, it, it is. No. I think it is. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Doing a yeah. bit right now. It's cut, not. Yeah, it, cut, it's not. Yes, it I is. Mean, it's sniggering. What? It's, it's no. a, a give a smothered or half suppressed laugh. A sniggering? I've never heard that. Never. In, in a, George, am I losing okay, my mind here? It's right. New it Oxford it's, American it's, Dictionary. It says half suppressed. Oh my god, I'm so, I thought I said oh, something wow. wrong. Oh, okay. fucking Common question. So, so that it really is a word, snigger. Yeah, that's how I've always learned it. But then when I came to America, they you I would always hear snicker. And then when I would read it in books, it was the other version. So I got confused. So what does right. sniggering mean again? It's, Give me the definition. First of all, it's, it's the a, same as snickering. It's a synonym. So you can actually replace it with snickering. So it's to snicker or to snigger. Yeah. So... Uh, it's a word, can, guys. Can you use that word if you're, you're with a black friend? I don't like this kind of stuff. I'm uncomfortable now. I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm asking if that if if that's okay. Well, call Probably. Ian Edwards. Call Ian Edwards right Actually, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you call? Yeah, call yeah, Ian yeah. Edwards. I'm, can I call him really? Yeah, call him. Call him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, also preface him with this is an actual word. This isn't. Just say my girlfriend said this was. Um, she when she said a sentence, she uh, used the word, and then I felt uncomfortable. Is it an actual word? All right, that's all right, the yeah. truth. I honestly have never, you've actually opened my eyes to something I've never known. All right, shh. You guys put malice behind it. Now I never want to say it again. I never even thought twice about it. Well, well, well. Look who's alive. Ian, 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 you're on my podcast right now, Tiger Belly right now. Uh -huh. I have to ask you a question. How black is this question? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I don't know why I call you for the, for for these in these moments because I love you so much and I just think that um so, <laughs> so all right so <laughs> I love you so much but I, I only call you when something black comes up <laughs> so you know you so you know there's there's a word out there that you can use right and I don't know if this is racist like if you were laughing right Ian. Uh -huh. Could I say to you, are you sniggering? Sniggering? Yeah, that's an actual word. It means g giggling, right? It's snicker. It's a snicker. It's, it's a snicker, right. but there's a word. You can call it snigger, too. It's a uh, synonym. It's a synonym. Oh, like, I've, I've never heard of that. <laughs> You've never heard of that? Me either. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. But would you I'm would you be it. offended if I, are you, if I said, are you sniggering? Would that be offensive? I mean, listen, you could get away with it, but... You know, based on the climate, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever yeah. happens after you say it in front of somebody that's black that you don't know, yeah, happen. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, reap the consequences is what you're saying. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it might be nothing. Right. I mean, it, it, it's like this. Like there's certain street names I'm worried about my white friend saying, like La Cienega or. <laughs> or <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, 
I have friends that just point at the sign. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know why you're pointing. I get it. Right, right. Yeah, sniggering is like it's. Yeah, it's, it's on the, it's on, you can get away with it, but it's on the edge, bro. <laughs> it's all right, it's on the, all, thank you so much. And also, are you in town or no, are you in New York? No, I'm in town, bro. All right, so I would, we would love to have you on the podcast in the next couple of weeks, is that cool? Oh, uh, yeah, hit me up. All right. Yeah, I'll call You'd you. come over, or we're all COVID tested, we're, we're very mindful. All right, I hope so. All right, I love you, buddy. I love you, right, bye. Take care, y'all. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, really funny. Oh, my God. Yeah. I feel like so, I, I, I didn't. I didn't even, it didn't occur to me that there was a slur in that word yeah. until I said it and you guys laughed. It's a real word. It's though. a real word. It's a real yeah, word. but it's fucking new Oxford American. They should just do away with it and make yeah, it. Yeah, get snicker. rid of the word. Yeah. Get, get rid of the CK word. CK is better. That's yeah, stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dumb. But it feels like a very English word. Like, you know, something they'd use in England. Gosh. Yeah. Do we have an unhelpful advice? Unhelpful advice with Bobby and Kalila. Hello, Tiger Belly. I'm going to get right into this. I just found out that my high school best friend was adopted, and he doesn't know it. He's 22 now, and so am I. Me and him barely talk or hang out since we graduated high school, so it's much easier for me to keep this to myself. He seems happy with his life right now, but he is living a lie. I feel responsible to tell him the truth, but I have a feeling that it can, uh, can mess him up seriously. What would you guys do in my shoes? Tell him the truth, knowing it could seriously damage him, or just let him live his life knowing he was ado- uh, not knowing he was adopted? I don't understand how he knows that and how his friend doesn't know it. Yeah. But let's suppose that's the truth. For me, it's just none of my business. Okay. You know, if I found out that you were adopted, uh, maybe you I would. See, it's it, because we're close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I would be like... I don't want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, It depends. Like, if I see, let's say, for instance, if my best friend Jessica was adopted and I see that she's had a really balanced healthy upbringing and she doesn't question herself and she doesn't have these like you know what i mean like these things that are just where she feels like an otherness about her then i'd leave it alone probably and be like look dude like i it's none of my business especially if it's sort of if it's just a rumor and i don't know 100 percent. yeah 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 i don't know how definite definitive it is but if 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 there was a rumor and if i could see my best friend struggling and saying you know what i just don't feel like i i like my mom and dad, I don't feel a closeness to them. I feel like they're so different from me. And if I could see parts of that line of questioning, I'd be like, you know what? I did hear this rumor. You know, I don't know who I heard it from. Then, then I would talk to her about it. Gilbert, let me ask you this. If you found out for sure that a couple of years ago, Kalila had cheated on me. Yeah. Would you tell me or not? Yeah. I don't like infidelity. Yeah. How would you, how would you say it? Hey. No, no, you would call me? I would first talk to her. Yeah, you'd be like, you need to tell him because yeah, I think I, I, it's not, I feel like that's not my place. But what if she denies it? You know for sure, but she denies it. Receipts, baby. You got receipts? Oh, I would have to have receipts. Yeah, you'd have to have receipts. I, I you can't just do that. Like, I would never confront anybody about their infidelity unless I knew, I knew that I, would have, I... If I knew 100%. All the evidence. This guy, right? You run into this guy. He goes, dude, I just want like, I, I would never tell him. I'm just telling you. And I, I, dude, I'm just, I, I have no, nothing against them and I have no, I'm not trying to get back at her, but dude, I did, was at a club and I did fuck her one night. Yeah, but that's just somebody like, for, say for instance, if, if I, if somebody did that to me, like with you, right? Or let's say Gilbert, yeah. like if it was the other way around and someone said, Hey, Kalila, do you know, whatever, Cindy, Gilbert's yeah. girlfriend, like I had sex with her. I'd be like, who are you? I know Gilbert and Cindy really, really well, mm. right? Mm. Who is this fucking person who I just met two seconds ago? I'm going to take their word for it and possibly, you know, get in the way of their relationship. But you then would I, would, me I would talk to Gilbert and yes. say, hey, this person said this. You got to let me know what's happening here because... All my interactions would be with her first before I even came to you. Yeah, exactly. To make sure. What about um, you, babe? If you if you found out that um, if you found out Kalala was cheating on you, would you even confront her, <laughs> <laughs> or you would pretend and then get? He wouldn't physically hurt me. I wouldn't hurt her. No, I would never hurt her. Oh, that's sweet. I would never hurt her. So stop. But I would. What I would do is I'd probably, if I had definite proof, like video. Yeah. What if she even told? He would you? just leave. Even if she told you, I wouldn't leave. What? No, I wouldn't leave. Would you try to work it out? 
I wouldn't work it out either. <laughs> Interesting. What would you do? <laughs> Just live in this I, 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 honestly, toxic nightmare. Dude, on, honestly, I think I would live in it for another year. Oh to, my to do God. what? To transition? And just think about it. Oh, no, no, no. I know what he'd do with it. You'd he would take that information and hold it over my head in case he needs to play more video games. No, 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 no. Wow. That no, no, no. Crazy. But, I, I, but I, would, I would have it on my, in my back pocket so I can win an argument. I could never hold. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, did you do the dish? You broke the dish. I, go, I didn't break the dish. Did you break you his broke dick? It. You cheated on me! <laughs> Done. Game over. Yeah, I, did I win that one? Yeah, you would win that one. Yeah. Oh my God. I could never... When something hurts me, I am not able to not wear it on my sleeve. Like, I wear my emotions so... You really do. And you're I flat. cannot you really hold do. it. Yeah, There's yeah. no... I can't conceal my feelings like that. When I'm hurt, I look hurt. Is that why you always ask, are you mad at me, babe? Are you mad at me? Is that why? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, what a great episode of Tiger Belly. What a fun solo. Uh, we talked about tumors. We talked about... Uh, Groundskeepers. Ground the word, keepers. a new word. We learned a new word. Yeah. yeah, let's not say that word again. Let's go. Let's uh, that's why I just said it. I'm not saying it, but we yeah. learned a new word. Um, we learned about what a groundskeeper is. Um, so what an excellent, informative podcast that we did. Yeah. Um, I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Good night. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh... I hope you guys enjoyed that so I know you guys have been asking uh, for a while for us to all be together alone and chat um, after the hectic energy of Rick El Glassman last week. Here was a cool, smooth podcast for you. Um, I want to give a shout out to someone. I would like to give a shout out to Bobby Lee's younger brother, Steve Lee. Happy birthday, Steve Lee. Q song now. Thank you. Uh, the Patreon is going strong and almost at 3,000 fellow papayas like you. To catch the newest vlogs, an exclusive interview with uh, Rudy, a.k.a. Jules, that just went live. Live streams, exclusive Discord. There's something for everybody. You can go to patreon.com slash tigerbelly. Get your questions on Tiger Belly by e emailing us at adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. We're looking for interesting, unusual, non-typical problems, and we need your help as much as you want ours. That's adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. Another quick thing, guys, you probably are like, hey, what about that uh, that singing competition? The singing competition submissions are still going. Remember, that's the end of the month. So as soon as it's September 1st, the uh, the deadline is, that's the deadline. So make sure you get it in before September 1st. And thanks again to our sponsors, Hims, BetterHelp, ShipStation. For help with hair loss and your other men's needs, go to 4 slash belly. Take charge of your mental health today with online therapy at betterhelp.com slash belly. Uh, meet the demands of delivery culture at shipstation.com with the offer code belly make ship happen and once again guys you can follow everything bobby lee at bobby lee live georgia george underscore camel kalila at calamity k uh tiger belly on instagram at tiger belly uh what else and also uh congratulations to um kalila's friend who just had a baby oh shit that's right shout out to my girl meg boom for her home birth and for her new impressive um little baby daughter there you go. Also, when the Where's world- the camera? Is this me? <laughs> That's you. Shout out to you. Shout out to you, Meg. And you're uh, you're probably the most fit mom I've ever known. Hell yeah. Dude, when when Meg and I did um, yoga, we do yoga on Zoom with Kara. Oh, she does it with you. Wow. Yeah. She was- Eight and a half months pregnant and doing handstands. Of course. And I can't do a fucking handstand. Because that's But Meg. that's Meg. That's literally yeah, Meg. She can, she can do it all. That's what happens when you have athlete privilege. So check your privilege. Check your privilege. Check your athlete privilege. Uh, we love you guys so much. Uh, I'm Mike Gilberts. Have a good day.